What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The NHC has tagged an area of interest in the Caribbean Sea. Once again, it is November 9th, 2023, and the NHC has tagged a potential area of interest to take a look at. Also, I've been watching some of, uh, some of the models. I've been talking with Weather Center Nazario about all this, and a lot of the stuff that's going on really is going to be potentially the last hurrah for the hurricane season in the Atlantic. Here's the situation. We have a 20% uh, a chance of formation in the next seven days. A broad area of low pressure could form in the southwestern Caribbean Sea by the middle of next week. Some gradual development of the system is possible thereafter as it meanders over the southwestern Caribbean Sea. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is at zero. However, in the next seven days, it's at 20%. And some of the wording I'm looking at is rather interesting for me because... They are saying a low pressure could form by the middle of next week, which is telling me that we're it's Thursday right now. In the middle of next week's about, I'd say, Wednesday to Thursday or something like that. What that's telling me is about they're forecasting something potentially to happen about five to six days out. So my main concern is, is that if the NHC is tagging something this early out, well, we might be uh, seeing something potentially happening in the Caribbean, something potentially happening in Nicaragua, something potentially happening in Costa Rica, in Jamaica, and across the western half of the Caribbean Sea. Something we need to pay attention to because, because an X hasn't really been marked for a, a potential area of interest or a potential center of circulation for the low pressure. So my guess is that it's going to be it's going to be moving through there in the next week or so and from then on out it's going to be using the low wind shear the warm water and the extreme ocean heat content to its advantage and really 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 use that to potentially develop so this is definitely something we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on over the next seven days with that being said we're going to go ahead and start showing some you some model runs of what may be happening here we're going to show you the european the gfs the icon the cmc and the nav gem as well as some of the ensembles as well as well as some other stuff that we're taking a look at including the conditions here's the european model that we are looking at right now starting roughly about uh, roughly about 60 hours Hours from now, we are we. I would uh, start laying a bit of a peak of uh, interest right there, and about I'd say about five days out, we're looking at a poten uh, potentially a couple of areas of low uh, of low pressure of low pressure starting to organize and develop. But for example, we have something starting to organize after about six days out, which is what the which is what the NHC is really tagging at this current point, and then things start to slowly organize, and from there, it's already a tropical storm about ten days out. Keep in mind, we're not 100% sure what's going to be happening after these model runs. We're just giving you the information right now, so that way you have a better idea of what may be going on and what may be transgressing. That's the European model for you. Here's the GFS model for you, ladies and gentlemen. The GFS has been a very interesting scenario. It's been a very hawkish model, to say at the very least. However, with this one starting about five to six days out, showing signs of organization and development and potential strengthening up to a hurricane as it's potentially impacting... Uh, Jamaica, Cuba, and making landfall there before moving out to sea and potentially making landfall near Nova Scotia right there. So this is definitely something to pay attention to, and the GFS is a lot more aggressive than the European model is. However, based on the fact that the NHC is somewhat confident that something may be happening about five to six days out, or at least starting to five to six days out, I'm a bit more inclined to take a look at this with a little bit less of a grain of salt than I usually would. However, at this current point in time, my thinking right now is, is that the GFS is going quite aggressive. For example, it's going down to like nine, uh, the 970s, potentially Category 2 strength that's making landfall in Cuba and impacting Jamaica. I'm thinking that's a bit extreme, but it's going to really depend on the, what the shear forecast is saying. So I'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that for sure. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model. The CMC has been one of those models that if it's consistent enough, then you're going to believe it. And the CMC model is showing signs of organization and potential development about a week out from now, similar to what the NHC is forecasting, and showing already a potential tropical storm organizing and developing off the coast of Jamaica. So this is definitely something that's not out of the question as of right now as we go to the CMC. 
I'm going to be hitting up some uh, some weather YouTubers, Weather Sarah Nazario, Weather Girl Danny, David Schlotthauer, those guys to kind of get a better consensus of what's going to be going on. So stay tuned for all that as time continues to go on. In the meantime, though, we're going to go ahead and show you the NavGem model. NavGem has been a very interesting model this whole time. The NavGem goes out about 180 hours out, which may be a bit, uh, may be a bit like not as far out as we wanted to. However, even still, the NavGem by about s seven days out is forecasting tropical storm strength and tropical storm organization off the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras over there. So either way, the way I'm seeing this is Right now, we have the European calling for development, the GFS calling for development, the CMC calling for development, and the NavGem calling for the development. Now, if we go ahead and show you the, I uh, show you the icon model, we'll go ahead and see how this whole thing plays out. We'll go back to the 12Z to get a, further, a bit further out of a reach. And the icon model showing potential signs of organization and development as this thing moves off the coast of Central America. Yeah, even the icon is calling for tropical development. Uh, for all this so right now we are five out of five of models calling for tropical development with varying intensities as we usually see in an aggregate like this however based off of all five of these models i'm interested to uh, say and i'm confident to say that development is at least most uh, at least likely to happen as of right now keep in mind we're about five to six days out Anything can happen, but if you're seeing five out of five models calling for tropical development that early on, that should be raising alarm bells for everyone in the Caribbean Sea, potentially in the Bahamas, and potentially in the southeastern coast of the United States. Because what I know, do know is that if we're seeing all five of these models developing and we're five to six days out, then it's going to be a potential recipe for disaster. That's all I'm going to say about that. Take it with a grain of salt. And we'll go ahead and show you some of the conditions because you're probably wondering right now, Patrick, you're saying all the, uh, all the models are calling for development, but what are the conditions like and what will the conditions be like when we get to this point? Well, I'm glad you asked right now because we have global sea temperatures still over 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States and Puerto Rico. We still have that going on across much of the Central Caribbean Sea. And my concern is, is that if something does not develop and suck up some of those global sea temperatures and bring them down a few degrees, what will 2024 be like? Will it be a very explosive season? Because I've been talking with my tropical team on Storms United, and from what I've been seeing, as well as a bunch of other climate models, there's a good chance that La Nina may come back uh, at the end of, at the, uh, by 2024. And for those of you who don't know what La Nina does to hurricanes, well, El Nino typically, with the exception of this year, brings less hurricanes in the season. This year has just been a very, very, very odd year when it comes to hurricane season, primarily because the Atlantic has been crushing the El Nino. The El Nino is strong, don't get me wrong, but the Atlantic Ocean has been absolutely dominant with the sea surface temperature anomalies, and that's why we saw more global sea temperatures. That's why we saw weaker wind shear. That's why we saw more OHC happen, and we had close to 20 named storms this uh, this season, potentially 21 if we if we get another thing that gets its act together. So with the global sea temperatures as high as they are right now, We'll go ahead and show you the ocean heat content. Ocean heat content where this thing is expected to organize and develop still well over 100. And that's grounds for potential rapid intensification right there, folks. And as it gets appro approaches Cuba, Jamaica, and those areas, it increases again to about 150, which if it plays all its cards right, could potentially intensify even faster. I'm not saying that's going to happen because there's other factors like dry air, wind shear, all that stuff that's going on. But in the meantime, if we go ahead and show you the wind shear, the wind shear as of right now isn't particularly that favorable. But keep in mind, this is current wind shear. This isn't wind shear that's forecasted like five to six days out when this thing starts to happen. My uh, And if we go ahead and show you the shear forecast brought to you by the European model, we'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, see how this whole thing plays out and from what i've seen the shear forecast according to what the european showing is there's going to be a bit of a break in the wind shear about three to four days out where it decreases to about 20 to 25 uh off the coast of jamaica while it remains very very uh, quiet 
uh, wind shear wise uh, near Nicaragua, near Honduras, and those areas right there. And the wind shear just kind uh, kind of regresses quite a bit as time continues to go on. And then you start seeing a massive decrease of wind shear as the European is forecasting the system to get up closer to Jamaica or Cuba as time continues to go on. So the wind shear forecast is there absolutely for tropical development. Now, if we go ahead and show you the moisture component to this, the moisture right now isn't particularly that uh, really there. However, we do see an increase of uh, moisture and relative humidity uh, starting about three days out as I'm recording this at this current point in time. And that does not go away as tropical development starts to organize and develop. And we do see an increase of dry air, but that gets mainly held off for the time being as time continues to go on and then you ha and then you have this uh, the dry air starting about 9 days out really trying to eat into it but the wind shear uh, and the dry air start to get regressed quite a bit as we get to the 10 day mark if we go ahead and show you the GFS they're even more aggressive when it comes to this the GFS is uh, uh, the GFS is calling for basically dry air to stay pretty much about at the very most, about 50 miles east of the Yucatan Peninsula right there. So that's the situation we have with the shear and the moisture forecast. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs. We're going to show you the European ensemble at this current point in time. If we go ahead and show you that, here's the European ensembles. And the ensembles are really confident that something is going to develop. We've been reporting it here on Pat's Path Predictor that the ensembles have been quite confident, but these ensembles are actually even more confident, and they're actually even more confident that maybe a hurricane could come out of this, according to what the European is showing. That's the European ensembles right there. GFS ensembles are even more aggressive from what I've seen, both of the operational and the ensembles. The GFS is like showing like at least 20 to 30 out of its 50 scenarios of hurricane strength with the uh, with about 40 or so reaching uh, some sort of tropical development. So that's another thing that we absolutely need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. And the spread on this is a bit interesting. The spread on this is having it anywhere from off the coast of Nicaragua all the way to Cuba by 204 hours out. So it's definitely something to pay attention to for sure. However, based off the GFS, they're quite confident something's going to happen. The and the operational has really been reflecting on it. If we go ahead and show you the Canadian ensembles, Canadian ensembles are definitely confident that something's going to be happening starting about five days out. As you can see, I'd say roughly about about 15 out of their 30 scenarios are calling for some sort of tropical development. Roughly about what what is this? 168 hours out. So this is definitely something to pay attention to. As time continues to go on, all the ensembles are screaming about tropical development. All the uh, all the operational models, all five we've shown you, are screaming that something is going to happen. Five out of five are calling for tropical development, which is something you absolutely do not want to see in November. As, especially as hurricane season starting to cool down and starting to wind down, especially after late October. So this is all stuff we absolutely need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.